Well, that first video was a learning experience. I did not realize the extent to which the creaking of this chair and the background noise from the washer and dryer had made the video completely unlistenable to. Unlistenable to? There's probably a far better term for that. And that's not even grammatically correct. Oh well. I continue to learn as I make videos, and I'm going to continue to make videos every single day. And when you start something, you should start badly. Don't, when you try, when you start doing anything, whether it's writing, making music, um, making videos, what have you, uh, learning a new skill, playing a sport, don't be afraid to start badly, you know, because that's how everyone starts, and just learn from this experience, each time you do it, you'll be a little better than you were the first time. And what I want to do now is get in the habit of making videos every day. And even if those videos aren't great, I'll still post them. And in the future, when I become more skilled and more knowledgeable and have video editing abilities and can make videos like Super Eye Patch Wolf with you know great visuals and just a great a great voice. I mean Listening to Super Eye Patch Wolf's videos, he makes video essays about things and things that I otherwise would not be at all interested in. He makes them so compelling. He really just draws you in, and he, he is uh, someone I look up to in terms of the art of video production and the art of the video essay. So, one day I'd like to be half as skilled as he is. In the meantime, I will continue to make videos about different topics. I don't know why I'm making this video now. I suppose I want to talk about my goal for the day. My primary goal is to fast. And I've had binge eating disorder my entire life where I'll eat junk food. And it's really terrible now because I have a heart condition where anytime I eat junk food, I often end up with chest pains. But that hasn't stopped me from binging on junk food. I'm just that addicted to it. I mean, it started in high school. And it, although I cure my depression and anxiety, I have not cured my binge eating disorder or my lack of motivation. But motivation has many different components. One of them is a support system. Being surrounded by people that want the best for you, who you can rely on for emotional support, for uh, support with advice, with problem solving, with practical support of all kinds. And I'll link below to an article about the different forms and different benefits of a support system and how it is one of the most critical elements of a happy, flourishing, and successful, meaningful life. Um, and also to a great article in Psychology Today about the nature and psychology and philosophy of friendship. Um, that I discussed with my best friend Joe yesterday, among many other things. I really do have to record a conversation with him. He is far wiser than I in many different areas, and we'll be friends for the rest of our, for the rest of our lives. Even though he lives in California, we'll talk on the phone for three hours about deep, meaningful things. In a society where most people avoid important, deep, meaningful subjects like the plague and instead consume their time with the most shallow, small talk and entertainment, mindless entertainment and just utter nonsense. There are a few people out there who still have the mindset of men like Aristotle, Plato, and Socrates, though, of course, they don't share the genius of those men. They share the passion for discussing and attempting to understand things like the meaning of life, the purpose of human existence, the purpose of their own lives, what makes for a meaningful life, what makes for great friendships, what makes for a great family, what makes for a great romantic relationship, what makes for great parenting, how to raise one's children in a way that they grow up virtuous and strong and resilient. I mean, I can't believe that people have children without 
person reading dozens of books about parenting and then uh, uh, establishing a parenting philosophy that will guide them into the future so that they know which values they want to teach their children and know, you know, how to bring them up in such a way that they're able to find the things that are deep and meaningful to them that they can become passionate about and where they can find the brilliance and beauty of life. Like when I have children, I want to introduce them to dozens of different things. Music, uh, different sports, whether it's baseball, which I think is utterly boring, or basketball, or mixed martial arts, or jiu-jitsu, or whatever. Even if it, gymnastics, uh, whatever it is, uh, even if I'm not interested in it, if my child, or one of my children, is passionate about something, I'll learn about it, because they love it. So, I'll learn about it, so I'll, I can discuss it with them, and, and encourage them, and be there for them, and be there for their events, for their games, and for their the practices and you know, not be a helicopter parent and reach that Aristotelian golden mean in all things, the balance in all things. Um, to encourage them but not push them too hard. To inspire them. To discipline them but to not be a tyrant. To not be a pushover. To not spoil them but also not to deprive them of things that they deserve or that they should have. Parenting is the most important element of human existence since it is how we form new individual beings and bring them into this world and help them form a worldview and help them hopefully achieve a meaningful, happy, purpose driven life where they have high quality relationships friendships where they are wise and they are virtuous they are strong they are courageous they are resilient they are kind they are humble they are morally courageous they will speak out even amongst peer pressure against something they know to be wrong and to have leadership capabilities, but also the ability to follow when appropriate. To know when to fight and when to negotiate. But regardless, in the future I want to make videos about, for example, finding and attracting women, which I learned how to do in my early 20s by studying it and then through practical experience learning how to strike up a conversation with a woman and how to ascertain by learning how to identify red flags and by asking the right questions whether they are a right match for me. I want other young people to find this knowledge so that they can learn how to find the right person for them and then learn how to communicate with that person properly and how to have a healthy relationship with them even if they grew up in a household where their parents didn't have a healthy relationship because that's when you really have to learn and to study it and understand the nature of relationships especially romantic relationships in order to be successful to know how to open up emotionally but also be strong for that person. I'm looking forward to it. I really am. And I want to make videos about parenting, about my burgeoning, my form my the parenting philosophy I'm forming and then a parenting plan. Um, a career plan for myself. Uh, for now, I'll study for the LSAT and try to score in the top 99th percentile and consider going to law school. That would take three years. Whereas I can learn how to code in 24 weeks with 60 or 80 hours a week of study 
and then get a job in coding. There's a website that offers it for free, and then they just take a percentage of your pay for the first year, like 10% of your income, once you get a job in coding. I think it's really brilliant, a really brilliant idea. Education where it's offered for free, high-quality education, and then all they ask is for a portion of your pay if you're successful, because then they have a vested interest in you succeeding in your career, and it works so much better than the current model of education where the schools are completely in, completely indifferent from an incentive structure as to whether or not you succeed after college. So we have a lot of people getting useless degrees or majoring in the wrong subject. For example, you know, I was extremely extroverted and high in openness new ideas and experiences and had a high verbal IQ and loved reading, writing, and speaking, and yet I got a degree I got a degree in accounting. Now, if the loan process was handled by private entities and not the government, they would develop structures by which they would determine the likelihood of whether or not you would succeed in your career and your capability to get a job in the field that you're studying and they would only give out loans if you had a good likelihood of succeeding and that would prevent a lot of people from getting degrees in subjects they don't need and far too many people go to college that don't need to go to college there's so many blue collar jobs where learning a trade would be far better and the blue collar work is no better or no worse than white collar work being a professor is not being is no better than being a plumber. Plumbers save more lives than doctors, you know, with modern hygiene and modern, modern hygiene, and also floor plumbing has resulted in one out of four U.S. households having toxic mold, and that toxic mold causes all sorts of terrible health problems, it causes neuro neurological issues in children, and it has destroyed many lives without a lot of people even knowing it. You know, young kids get sort of all these neurological disorders, and many times the culprit is black mold in the house, and the people never even find out. Never figure it out. That's an important piece of information that everyone should know. Everyone with a house that isn't new, you know, just recently built, should have their whole household checked for toxic mold, since one out of four households do. And if it does have to have someone have it eradicated and then make sure that the plumbing is such that um, there won't be another leak that will lead to the growth of toxic mold that can cause autoimmune, autoimmune disorders, a terrible autoimmune disorder that almost killed my sister. She was hospitalized. She was suffering from anaphylactic shock episodes. She was, there was a point she couldn't walk. It almost killed her. It's given her cardiovascular problems. And... Uh, was all because of toxic mold. And Dave Asprey, he almost died due to toxic mold exposure. But through biohacking, was able to save his own life. Hmm. I'll link below to uh, a video about Dave Asprey and anything else I discussed that people may be interested in.